Hi, I'm Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Thank you so much for joining us for Episode 13 of Season 2 of Live with Annie. It is always a treat to see our regular viewers joining us from all over the world, so thank you for being with us again. And if you're new to Live with Annie, we welcome you to our community and hope to see you again as well. We know that there are lots of things that all of you could be doing with this time, and we really appreciate that you've made time to be with us today. If you enjoy these weekly episodes, we'd love it if you would help us spread the word by letting your friends know about them too. You can do that easily just by tagging them in the comments while you watch. And to do that, just type the at symbol followed by the name that they use on Facebook. Their, their picture will pop up. You can make sure you've got the right person. If you do, click on that, type your comment, and submit it. And then they'll be able to watch right along with you. Also, we really love reading your comments, so please be sure to interact with us throughout this presentation. Let us know what you think about what we're saying, and if you have any questions, be sure to enter those, and I'll do my best to answer them at the end. Last week, we talked about choosing coordinates for your projects, and we discussed how to pick zippers, mesh, fold-over elastic, strapping, and hardware to complement your fabrics. If you missed that episode or you want to watch it again, remember that all of the episodes of Live with Annie are available online. And you can watch them on our Facebook page, on our YouTube channel, or by going to byannie.com live and we're going to put up all the links to make them easy for you to find. Now that you've got the fabrics and supplies ready to go for your project, it's time to crack open the pattern and get started. So to help you make sense of it all, we're going to continue our Biani bag making series today by taking a closer look at a Biani pattern. We'll talk about how our patterns are laid out and discuss our general pattern writing philosophy, format, style, and terminology. As we go, we'll share tips for getting the most from Biani patterns. Remember, if you have any questions, comments, or tips as we go, be sure to write them in the comments. We really do enjoy hearing from you, and we're going to do our best to answer any questions before we close. So let's start with a little Biani history. In the mid-1990s, my husband and I sold our country inn in Alaska and retired to the desert southwest. Within a few years, my kids were heading off to college, and all of a sudden, I had free time on my hands. I joined the local quilt guild, made lots of wonderful friends, and quickly became a very active member. I arranged my calendar co to coordinate with guild events, and I took every class and workshop that I could. I loved fabric and quilting, and it didn't take me long to realize that I needed a way to pay for my quilting habit, and writing patterns for quilts and other sewing projects just seemed like a great solution. As a former CPA, I really loved organization and order, so figuring out the steps to make something was right up my alley. I also enjoyed playing on the computer, so I polished my desktop publishing skills and learned to design blocks and quilts using quilt design software. Next, I signed up for a class to learn HTML coding at the college, designed a website, and started Biani.com with all of three patterns. It was such a thrill to get a $10 pattern order and know that I could add a yard of fabric to my stash. Since I wrote that first pattern in 2000, we've written over 200 patterns, primarily for bags and organizational items, but also for quilts, home deck items, and wearables. During that time, Biani has grown to include thousands of products in a big warehouse with an awesome shipping, customer service, marketing, and pattern development team. So from looking for a way to pay for my quilting habit, to rarely finding time to quilt, it has been quite the journey. I'm gonna have a quick drink. So at Biani, we work really hard to write patterns with instructions that are clear, complete, and error-free. We check and double check measurements to make sure that everything will fit together perfectly and that you'll be able to make a beautiful project with a professional finish. 
As we work on a pattern, we make numerous prototypes to tweak the instructions, and we also get input from testers with a variety of skills. I am always amazed at how someone can read a sentence in an entirely different way than I meant it, and we have worked really hard to be very thorough in our instructions. So for instance, if you need to center a pocket on a bag front, we are going to give you all the measurements you need to ensure that it's properly placed. That said, I know that opening a Biani pattern and seeing all the words can be a bit overwhelming to someone who has never made one of our patterns. So I want to take some time today to go through some general info about our patterns to make things a bit more familiar and less intimidating. So because of my quilting background, Biani patterns are written from the perspective of a quilter rather than from the perspective of a garment maker. That means that we generally use techniques that are familiar to quilters. Cutting with a rotary cutter and ruler rather than using tissue paper patterns. Quilting and stabilizing fabrics when appropriate. Sewing primarily with quarter inch seams. Binding raw edges and more. Biani patterns also generally follow a fairly standard order. So the first thing that you're going to do is cut all the pieces that you need for your project, including any pieces that might need to be quilted. Then you're going to quilt the appropriate pieces, and from those, cut all the various project pieces that you need. Next, you're going to prepare all the components. And depending on the project, that's probably going to include some bias binding, um, some handles, a carrying strap perhaps, and some tabs, some pockets. These are all pieces for an ultimate travel bag, in case you haven't guessed. So we've got mesh pockets, we've got slip pockets, we've got zippered pockets, we've got zipper side strips. And then after you have all the various pieces prepared, then you're going to start putting, bringing those together and assembling the project. So we've got the front of the bag with the pocket attached. Next, we're going to attach the handle. Then we're going to take the prepared pocket that we've already made, put it on the back, and get all your bag put together. So having all the parts and pieces ready to go when you begin really makes the final assembly so much easier. And we are going to talk about um, all of those steps in an upcoming um, part of our Biani Basics series. So uh, make sure you, you join us for the next few weeks because we're going to be going through lots of that. So in the 22 years that we've been writing patterns, we have really learned a lot. And I can say our patterns have definitely improved over the years. The biggest changes to our patterns happened in 2016 when we started working with Lindsay Bergevin, a professional graphic artist who is also a maker and quilter. Working with a designer who sews really makes a difference in our ability to provide illustrations that make sense. And Lindsay not only provides illustrations for our patterns, but she's also helped us update the layout and design so that they're easier for you to read and follow. And as we worked with her, we worked really hard to come up with some standards for terminology and style so that we'd have more consistency between our patterns. I really wish I could just wiggle my nose and have every single Biani pattern updated to the new design, but unfortunately there are only so many hours in the day. We do work to update some of our older patterns each year, and we continually work to re improve and refine the standards with each new pattern that we write as well. So let's take a look at a typical Biani pattern. And I have picked um, Project Bags 2.0. It's one of our most popular patterns and an update of a pattern that we wrote almost 10 years ago. But as we said, Biani patterns follow a fairly standard design and style, so what I'm going to show you with project bags is going to apply to most Biani patterns, especially those that have been written since 2016. So um, when you look at a pattern on the front, you're going to find a full color cover. It's got pictures of the finished project. It's got little bullets that describe the main features, 
And if it's a pattern for which we've filmed an add-on video, you're going to find a colored circular bullet right on the front to let you know that video help is available. We're going to talk a little bit more about add-on videos in a minute. On the back cover, you're going to see a more detailed description of the project, dimensions of the finished project, a table listing the supplies that you need, any special notes about fabric and supplies, information about the fabrics that we used for the models on the front cover, contact info should you have questions or want to share pictures of your finished projects with us, and the patterns, SKU, barcode, and version number. There is a lot of information on this little half sheet of paper. We talked about all the items on the supply list in Episode 9 of Season 2, and we included a lot of helpful info for items on that supply list, so be sure and check that out if you have any questions about the, the supplies you need to make our projects. So when you take the pattern out of the project, between these two covers, you're going to find what I call the guts of the pattern, and we're going to talk lots more about that soon. Since this is a pattern for which we've filmed an add-on video, included within the guts is a coupon for an add-on video. And this coupon is printed on a half sheet of paper. It has a picture of me, um, some information about add-on videos, and a unique code on the back. And you can use this code to get the add-on video at no charge. So we always recommend that you wait to purchase the add-on video until you have the paper pattern in hand. We talked a lot about the process of purchasing the video, and we walked through all the steps in week number 35 of Live with Annie last year. So if you need some help doing that, please watch that episode. The part about add-on videos starts at about the 35-minute mark. We also excerpted that part of the program and saved it on its own. And Jake's going to put up the link, so if you want to just get to it quickly, you can type in that link and watch just that part. All right, once you have purchased the add-on video, um, one question we often get is, I can't find it. You're going to find it in your digital library. And there are several ways to find your digital library, but remember that you have to be logged in. That's one of the most important things. Otherwise, the computer has no way of knowing who you are or where to find your unique digital library. So once you're logged in, just go to either the top or the bottom, bottom menu bars and look under the titles that say My Account. And um, once you see that, you'll see Digital Library listed on there. When you click on Digital Library, you're going to find three sections. So the top one is Recently Purchased Videos. Underneath that is Recently Purchased Downloads. And at the bottom is Public Videos. So to find your, your add-on video, you want the first section. And note that you may need to click on the little button that says See All Purchased Videos to find it. Once you get in there, you'll see that they're arranged in the order that you bought them. So you may have to scroll a little bit to find videos that you purchased previously. It logged me out. So I'm oh. just logging back in real quick. Jake go. got logged out, so it's going to take him a minute. There he is. He's back in now. So click on that button for recently purchased videos. There we go. And so you're going to see there that they're all in the order of how you purchased them. So you might have to scroll a little bit. But here is a really helpful tip. You can use the Find function to find videos more easily. So to do this, just click on the white background anywhere on the screen. It doesn't matter where, so long as you're just on the background. And then hold down the Control and F keys to engage the Find function. And you're going to see a little search box pop up in the top right corner of your screen. Or at least that's where it pops up on mine. I assume that's, um, that's the same no matter what kind of computer you're using. Um, if not, look around on your screen. You should see it. And then click on that box and just start typing in the name of the add-on video for which you want to search. For example, if I type ultimate, you can see that the search function is going to take me right to the videos for that pattern. That really saves a lot of time if you have multiple videos in your library. For instance, in my library, I have every single add-on video. So that has been, once they taught me how to do that, that was a real time saver. 
All right, once you have found the add-on video for the proper pattern, note that there are little arrows on each side that you can use to scroll between the various videos available for the project. So occasionally we get um, emails from people who say, I don't have all the videos, and I think they just haven't scrolled all the way across to find them all. So if you need any more help using the code or accessing your add-on videos, there, we also have a video on the add-on video product page, and you can use that to, to get some more information as well. All right, I am going to set these covers and this add-on video coupon aside, and now we're going to take a closer look at the guts of a standard by any pattern. And Jake is going to try and walk through this on the screen with me, so hopefully you'll be able to see it there. So on the patterns, there's a lot of standard info at the bottom of each page. You've got page numbers, you've got the pattern name, the copyright date, and in the middle, um, or maybe a little over to the right side, you'll find the version date and the initials of the person who vi finalized that version. And that date is written in standard US format. So it's month, day, year, with each of those in two digits. So 042221AU means that this Project Bags 2.0 pattern was last updated on April 22, 2021 by me, Annie Unrein. Each time we make corrections or updates to the pattern, we update that version date. And unless the fixes are minor typos or fixes that don't affect the instructions, we also post the corrections on our website and on our pattern corrections page. Not and, on our pattern corrections page. So we always recommend that you begin by reading the entire pattern and checking that page at our website to find out if any corrections have been made since your pattern was printed. And so that version date is especially important so you can know if any corrections apply to the pattern that you have. So for instance, let's assume you're getting ready to make a cute little back at you 2.1 and you want to check to see if there's any corrections before you start sewing. So go to byannie.com and click on Pattern Corrections, which is under Get to Know Us on the bottom menu bar. Then scroll down to Back at You 2.1, and you're going to see a note saying that there is a correction for patterns that were printed before 110821. So if the date on your pattern is before November 8th, 2021, you'll go to page 3, find step 2E, and make the correction that's posted there. So simple and easy to do. Um, just be sure and check there. All right, let's go back to our Project Bags pattern and take a quick look at the individual pattern pages. So page one of the pattern is pretty standard, but it includes a lot of really helpful information. And even if you have made lots of Biani patterns, we recommend reading it because the info does vary from pattern to pattern. So page one includes the pattern name, the dimensions of the finished project or projects, a reminder to read the pattern, check for corrections, and watch any available video tutorials. It also includes general instructions about techniques that are used throughout the pattern, such as quilting, binding techniques, working with vinyl, and so forth. At the bottom, you'll find our copyright notice, and on the right side, you're going to see a list of tools and notions that you need for the project. We talked about all those tools and notions in episodes seven and eight of this year's um, Live with Annie, so be sure and check those out if you have any questions. All right, the real meat of the pattern, which is the instructions for the project, usually starts on page two, and continues for however many pages are needed to get through them. So at the top of um, page two, usually, you're going to, or, or wherever the pattern instructions begin, you're going to find a key. And this key details the colors and patterns that are used for the fabrics and supplies in the illustrations throughout the pattern. That makes it really easy for you to know if the piece is main fabric side up, lining side up, if it's made out of coordinating fabric, vinyl, and so forth. To help you keep track of the steps and to organize them for easier understanding, we use a standard alphanumeric outline format. So all the major steps are labeled with Roman numerals. For this project, 
bags 2.0 pattern. Those include one, cut and quilt, two, prepare components, three, prepare bag front, and four, assemble project bag. Within each of those major steps, we use capitalized letters to list the main substeps. So for instance, in this pattern, step four, prepare components, or it's not step four, prepare components, um, assemble the bag, includes three main substats. So A is attach the bag front to the bag body, B is attach the ha handle, and C is bind. So as you can see, you can get a really quick overview of a Biani pattern by just reading the steps that are listed in Roman numerals and capital letters. And that's a really great way to do your first reading of the pattern. You're going to get a general idea of the steps to complete the project without getting caught up in all the weeds. So underneath those main substeps, we use numbers and then lowercase letters to further break down the steps and each of those sub-steps starts with a bulleted checkbox. It's really important in our patterns to follow the steps in the order they're written, so be sure to use those handy checkboxes. They really help you keep track of where you are in the process, and customers tell us they really appreciate them. Being able to check off a step as you go is so satisfying, and if you get interrupted or have to put the project away for a while, it really helps you know where to start again. So I've got a couple of tips for you if you're using a pattern and you want to be able to use it again. So one of them is um, that you could use a friction pin to check off the steps as you go. A friction pin is ink. They come in lots of fun colors. You can get rid of it just by ironing the pattern where you're, when you're done. So all those check marks are going to disappear. Just be careful not to get ink on your iron or ironing board. So a piece of plain paper over the pattern would probably be a good idea. Personally, I like to keep my pattern pages in sheet protectors in my little Write Stuff notebook that I made. And um, I can use a little Visa V marker. So these are dry or wet erase markers rather than dry erase. I'm going to pick a color we can actually see. And so if I've got my pattern page in a sheet protector, I can check off my steps as I go using that. And it's not going to, well, it's going to rub off because I didn't let it dry. Let's, this one's probably dry enough. As you can see, it doesn't rub off when I do it. But if I just get a little damp rag when I'm done, I can wipe all those away and my pattern is, is new and ready to go again. So we know that people make our patterns more than once, and that's an, a way to make it easy for you. Put this marker away before I lose it. I love this little project, or pencil holder that comes in here, because um, I can keep all my colored pens and pencils right handy. All right, as we said earlier, illustrations in all Biani patterns published since 2016 have been drawn by a professional graphic designer. So as I work on writing a pattern, I make notes of any steps that I think would benefit from an illustration. And then as I sew, I take photographs of all those steps, and our designer Lindsay converts those into dimensional line drawings. Using illustrations rather than pictures of the steps enables us to really focus on the important parts of the step and really helps to reduce the clutter. It also enables us to be very clear about which fabrics are used where, as we can color code the various fabrics according to the key we mentioned earlier. And this really helps avoid confusion. Then, depending on the complexity of the cutting il illustrations, we'll also often include cutting layouts for the various fabrics, including the quilted fabrics. And you're either going to find those near the cutting instructions or at the end of the pattern. Notes in the pattern will tell you where to find them. Another important thing to note is that the yardage requirements that are listed on the supply list are based on cutting pieces in the order listed in the cutting instructions and according to the cutting layouts. So be sure to refer any, to any layouts that are in the pattern to make sure that you make most efficient use of the fabrics. If the pattern requires any templates, such as circle templates for rounding corners or special templates for pieces that can't be easily cut or shaped using rulers, you're generally going to find those at the end of the pattern. And again, the text of the pattern is going to tell you where to find them. 
Then at the end, you will also find one very treasured part of a Biani pattern, labels. And we suggest that you copy those labels to preserve your original pattern. And then you can just cut apart the pieces and use them to label pieces as you cut. This really makes identifying all the pieces so much easier, especially if the pattern has more than one project or multiple sizes. We shared a lot of tips for cutting apart and attaching labels in week number 34 of season one of Live with Annie, so be sure to check that out, especially the tips for using a perforated blade and a basting gun. Boy, I'm thirsty today. One more drink. So now that you understand how a Biani pattern is arranged, let's talk about what you'll find within the pattern instructions. So if the pattern includes more than one size, we use a couple of different ways to list dimensions and instructions for each size. So we may show the pieces needed for each size within a table. We especially do that if there are um, three or four sizes. Or the instructions might be just listed on one line. If the pieces are listed on one line, the first set of dimensions or instructions listed are for the small size. The next set, which is in parentheses, are for the medium. The next size, which is in brackets, will be for the large. And if there is a fourth size, such as the jumbo size in this Project Bags 2.0 pattern, that dimension will be listed in braces. So our tech editor, Leslie, tells me that she uses a highlighter to mark the size that she is making, and that's a really great way to avoid confusion as you work. Let's talk next about measurements in our patterns. Measurements in the majority of Biani patterns are shown as height by width, with height being the lengthwise grain of the fabric, which runs parallel to the selvages, and width being the crosswise grain. So it's going to have selvages on each side. And that um, methodology applies to mesh as well as to fabric. Note that for both fabric and mesh, the crosswise grain is more stretchy than the lengthwise grain, so you also want to keep that in mind as you cut. We talked extensively about measurements in week number 51 of season one of Live with Annie, so if measurements are confusing to you, be sure and watch that episode. The part about measurements starts at around the 12 minute mark. And as we said before, most Biani patterns do not include templates for the various pieces. Rather, we've designed them so that pieces are cut using a rotary cutter with quilting rulers and a cutting mat. So on page one of the pattern in the list of tools and supplies needed, you'll find a list of the sizes of rulers we used for that particular project. And we are going to share a lot of tips for cutting in next week's Live with Annie, so be sure to join us then. In the meantime, if cutting using a rotary cutter and rulers is new to you, be sure to check out our free add-on video for Peacekeeper. It has a lot of great tips for using a rotary cutter and cutting your fabrics. All right, one other wonderful improvement that we have made to Biani patterns published since about mid-2020 is the inclusion of a special section at the beginning of major steps. This section begins with the heading, for this step you will need, and it lists the various pieces that you're going to use for that particular step. Including that info at the beginning of the step helps you be prepared with everything that you need. It also really helps make the steps more concise and less wordy, so it's a real win-win. It will be much easier to gather all those pieces for each step if they have labels on them. So we recommend that you not only label pieces as you cut, but that you also reattach those labels as you work through the steps to prepare the pieces. Again, if the pattern you're making has an add-on video, you're also going to find bullets within the pattern that indicate that the sections, which sections are covered by the video. Be aware that because many of the techniques used in Biani patterns are the same from pattern to pattern, most add-on videos are not step-by-step -step tutorials. We use our Biani Basics video tutorials to teach general steps that are the same from pattern to pattern, and we use the add-on videos to focus on the more unique or challenging parts in individual patterns. 
We're going to talk more about the Biani Basics tutorials in a bit. So next, let's talk about seam allowances that are used in Biani patterns. We use an accurate quarter inch seam most of the time, but our patterns also call for a variety of seam allowances, from an eighth of an inch to a half of an inch, as well as a scant quarter inch seam and a generous quarter inch seam. So rather than specify the seam allowance for every single step in a pattern, by any patterns include this note or something similar to it. And it says, use accurate quarter inch seams unless directed otherwise. So that note is placed in the pattern at the beginning of the first step that involves stitching. So for example, on our free Easy Does It pattern, you will see it right under step two, prepare components. Knowing when to use each seam allowance will be easier if you understand the reasoning be behind why we recommend each of these seam allowances. And we went into a whole lot of detail about seam allowances in Season 1 of Live with Annie in our week number 39 Tips, Tricks, and Techniques episode. So rather than repeat all that today, I'm just going to recommend that you watch that episode. It includes a ton of really helpful info. And to find it, just go to biani.com slash live, scroll down to the past episodes section, and then use the drop down menu to go to week number 39. And the part there about seam allowances starts at about 5 minutes and 20 seconds. I must not. I did. Grab these, get these up here. So if you are new to Biani patterns, we recommend that you start with our Biani basics patterns, each of which includes a complete step-by-step -step video tutorial. So we go through every step, start to finish, with lots of extra helpful information included as well. So these patterns, um, there's four of them, and this is the order that we recommend them doing them in. So the first one is Petty Four Baskets, makes a cute little basket. The next is Peacekeeper. Um, the next one we recommend you do is Call Me, and then we end up with Easy Does It. So these are all simple projects. They require a minimal investment of time and materials. They will not only help you become familiar with our pattern writing style, but they're also going to teach you many of the basic techniques that are used in most biani patterns. Everything from cutting and quilting to assembly and binding. So to find those patterns, just go to biani.com and type basics in the search box. Or you can click on the Patterns tab and scroll down to the Biani Basics group. And we have talked often about these projects in our Live with Annie episodes, so if you want some more information about those and what you learn with each, check out our Season 1, Week 28, Sewing for Guys, and Week 49, Gift Ideas episodes. Um, they go through a lot of the information about what, you, what each project includes. Another really good option if you're new to buy any patterns is to start with one of our patterns that includes an add-on video. And you can find all of those by clicking on the Patterns with Add-on Videos link that's under the Patterns tab at Biani.com. These patterns will include our new layout and design along with videos to help with the more unique or challenging aspects. So I hope this information has been helpful to you in understanding how Biani patterns are put together. Again, whether you're working with one of our newest and most up-to-date patterns, or if you're working with an older pattern, we always recommend that you read the entire pattern and watch any related videos before beginning the project. Then just follow the pattern instructions in order, step by step, checking off each step as you proceed. Before you know it, you'll have a beautiful finished project. Most Biani patterns use very similar techniques, and once you understand the basic style and structure, you're going to be on your way to many bag making adventures. And if you have any questions as you go, be sure to contact us for help. Don't forget, too, to share pictures of your finished projects with us because we can't wait to see what you make. And finally, please ask for our patterns and supplies at your local quilt shop. We want to do um, all that we can to help them thrive. And if they don't have them in stock, they can certainly get them for you 
either from us or from their favorite distributor. Quilt shops are really the backbone of our industry, so um, let's help keeping them in business. All right, let's go on now to some questions that Brooke has posted. She said, several people asked, what was your first pattern? My very first pattern was Hanging Organizer, which was is still on our website. It's a, an organizer that I made out of canvas with vinyl pockets on it. It's made to hang on the door of um, your sewing room or a closet. And at the time when I wrote that, I was really into scrapbooking. I was doing scrapbooking workshops. So there's a version in it for scrapbooking tools and supplies. And then there's another version in it for quilting supplies. Simple and easy to make, and I still use mine at home every day. Um, if the pattern calls for quilted and non-quilted pieces, how do you deal with reserving some non-quilted fabric when sending to the long armor? That is a really good question, and that is something that you really have to think about uh, before you send it. So um, you might notice that most of our newer patterns, um, if we can at all avoid it, we don't um, have some of the main or lining that aren't quilted. So a lot of the pieces that we used to cut out of the main fabric, we now cut out of the coordinating fabric. But if, if you're sending it to a long armor, you want to for sure read the pattern and if it in the cutting instructions at the beginning, if it calls for some that are non-quilted, make sure you cut off a strip big enough to cut those before you send the rest to the long armor. That's a great question. Who comes up with all the different pattern types and ideas? All have been great. No duds here. That's wonderful to hear. So um, when we started, it was me, myself, and I who basically did everything. So until probably about the past oh, 10 or 15 years, I'd say most of it was me. But since then, we have um, a full group who meets to discuss. And, and what we try to do is have about four to six new patterns every six months. The past year, we've been totally off schedule with that. But we try to do that many. And of those, we try to make sure we have a purse type uh, project, an organizer type project, maybe a home deck type project, um, so that we vary those in there. So it's a group effort. We get lots of suggestions from customers like you, and we um, add those to our list. I have We use Asana for keeping uh, track of projects, and I have a whole task in there that's pattern ideas, and it's pages and pages long. When people send me an email with suggestions, I copy it and put it in there so that when we're ready, uh, to work on the pattern. We've got all of that information there and we can try to incorporate all those things. So keep your ideas coming. We love getting them. Next question was, some fabric prints are directional. If I rotate the fabric direction from your pattern direction, what are the things I need to watch for? That is something that we are going to talk about next week when we talk about cutting because um, we have experienced the very same thing. For instance, most directional fabrics are printen, printed with the design going from selvage to selvage. However, the wonderful Tula Pink often makes her designs go this way. And we try to, to write them for what's the most general, so in that case it's that way. But if it has to go this way, you've got to make some changes. So. Um, what I would, and the other thing I, we discovered last year is that some of hers goes this way and some of hers go this way. So we ended up with a big piece of quilted fabric that the main is going one way and the lining's going a different way. So um, there are definitely things you need to, to look for. And I would say, for, for instance, read the pattern first. The, the directions are always height by width. So you're going to know that the height is this part of your bag. The width is this part of your bag. So look at how the pieces are designed. And if your fabric goes the other way, know that you're going to have to sketch out a different cutting layout so that your pieces go the right way. I think that's part of the reason that when Tula quilts uh, pieces for her bags, she usually cuts all the pieces and quilts those individually because then it takes away some of that um, confusion. And we were, again, we're going to talk a lot more about that next week. Next question was, do you have a thread you, that you recommend? Absolutely. We use So Fine number 50, which is a 50 weight three ply polyester thread from Superior Threads. And that is the thread that we use whether we're quilting, 
uh, assembling a project, um, all things. It's fine enough that you can do a lot of lines in one place and it doesn't show up a lot, um, but it's strong and sturdy and we really love that thread. Leslie, who's our tech editor, is a very um, strong Aurifil um, user, and she recommends their 40 weight, which is only a two-ply, it's a cotton thread, and that's what she uses for all the bags that she makes. So either one of those, I can tell from my experience and Leslie's experience that people have had great results with those. Can your patterns be made with leather on the outside, and what about home decor fabrics? Um, I have never made a bag with leather, but I would assume it's pretty similar to using cork. And we have made bags with cork. We have used home deck fabrics. The main thing that you need to consider is that most of our patterns, um, the fabrics are stabilized with soft and stable. And um, a lot of times we quilt them. You don't always have to quilt them. And in two weeks, we're going to talk about what to do if you don't want to quilt. Um, so be sure and join us then. But um, I would definitely make sure that I'm using a cotton fabric for the bindings in particular because uh, those other fabrics would be much too thick to use for bindings. Uh, but I think they definitely could. It will depend on the project itself. You probably aren't going to want to quilt the leather, although if you follow our photo contest a couple of weeks ago, a lady made an amazing bag that she quilted the leather on, and we've got pictures. I think she was one of our honorable mentions. Um, so um, you certainly could do that. But yes, people do. We haven't ourselves, but certainly an option. Any chance that we will get teasers about the new patterns? Um, we have had a few teasers, especially about the 2.0s. We actually have only one brand new pattern that's coming out. And um, I know that we've had it on the screen a couple times. So if you've been looking, you've probably seen it. And we'll probably start dropping a few more hints as we go. In fact, I may show some of that um, in some of our um, upcoming episodes. So. Yeah, watch for that. One last question. Where in Alaska did you live? We started in Huna, which is a little 90% um, Clinket Indian village, about 50 miles west of Juneau. My husband got a job teaching school there, um, and I worked as bookkeeper at the school. We were only there for a year. We were replacing a teacher who was on sabbatical. The following year, we moved to Ketchikan. Uh, which is way down in southeast Alaska. Um, and we spent three years there. And then we were about ready to leave Alaska. But the state opened up land for lottery sale. My husband had wanted to farm. And we won the right to buy a 160-acre homestead in Gustavus, which is, again, west of Juneau. It's the gateway to Glacier Bay National Park. So we lived there for about 20 years and had our country in there. And then we were ready for sunshine and somewhere where we could go do things like hike and bike in the winter, and that's what brought us to Southern Utah. All right, not a question, but observations for la later. People love the labels and were curious about the right stuff and have questions about fabric markers and marking. So we are going to talk uh, when we... Um, so my plan is that next week we're going to talk about cutting, which is the first step in the pattern. The following week we're going to talk about components, and then we're going to talk about putting the projects together. So we will for sure talk about marking then. We're going to talk about labels more next week. So um, stay tuned. Be sure and join us each week. And don't forget, if you can't be with us live, all of these are posted on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and our um, uh, by any live page, so you can always come back and watch them if you miss them live. And the right stuff is an awesome little project. This is the largest one in the pattern. The pattern includes three different sizes. Um, a great way to carry things that you want to um, put in a three-wing notebook. So it's got a pocket in the back, a size of these, uh, or a size of this to put all your pens and pencils in. And, I just love this little notebook. Uh, Glow and I made one of these, not last night, but the night before, for a friend who had a birthday coming up. And um, we left off the flap to make it quicker, and we bound the outside edges. And um, we had that done in a couple hours. And she was the one sewing. I was just helping her cut. So it's a fast little project to make. So that pattern, again, is called The Right Stuff. And uh, keep your eye out for that. All right, so March is almost over. 
But makers in the continental U.S. still have a couple of days to enter the National Quilting Month uh, giveaway that's sponsored by our friends at Shannon Fabrics. There's three grand prizes, including some Fun by Annie products. And again, the giveaway runs only until March 31st, so don't um, don't delay. Uh, go ahead and get your entries in on that, and we're going to put up a link so you can find all the details. And as we discussed last week, we regularly make new models. We love sharing them with quilt shops around the world through our Biani Trunk Show program. So if you want to see uh, models made with Biani patterns up close and personal, be sure to ask your favorite local quilt shop to schedule a trunk show. It's a really easy process. They just have to purchase six patterns for each model that they borrow and pay shipping to and from the store. Boy, I am thirsty today. And when your store brings in a trunk show, you're going to be able to examine the models to really understand their features. You'll be able to purchase patterns and supplies and support your local quilt shop. So, such a deal. We have shipped trunk shows to several more shops this past week. So here are some places you can visit in the coming weeks to get your Biani fix. So we're going to start in Evansville, Indiana with Bernina of Evansville. And this dealer focuses on selling Bernina sewing and embroidery machines, but they also service most brands of machines. They also offer classes for new machine owners, as well as for sewing, quilting, and embroidery. And they've got some really fun Kimberbell classes coming up soon, and you can find the details on their Facebook page. Joanne, who is the manager, tells me that Biani patterns have become very popular in their store and they now have most of our accessories as well as soft and stable too. And we really love hearing that. So their trunk show is scheduled for April 12th to May 10th, so be sure to stop in and check it out. Next, we're going to travel to Vermont where sisters Kathy and Diane at Katie Corners have a Biani trunk show on display from mid-April through mid-May and they are going to be presenting a program at their local guild and also conducting a workshop to make Grab Some Grub 2.0. And it's their 10th anniversary. So the theme for their trunk show is Social Picnic. So be sure to stop in and check it out. Diane tells me that they have been building the business for 10 years so that she can retire and take over the store. And she said she's retiring this summer and they have decided to launch the new business starting with a Biani trunk show. And we loved hearing that. So congratulations and best wishes to Diane and Kathy. Finally, we're going to travel to upstate New York to Patchwork Garden in East Ham Amherst. So owners Joan and Bev grew up sewing and they love to quilt. And when the pandemic started and all of their in-person activities were put on hold, the team realized that they needed a way to connect with their customers. So Joan started presenting a weekly Facebook Live. And her Saturday Smiles presentations are full of tips and product info, so be sure to check those out. She goes live every Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. They also do a lunch and learn at 12.30 Eastern on the first and third Fridays of the month. And these are half hour demos or interviews with special guests. And I'm excited to say that I will be their special guest for lunch and learn on Friday, April 8th. And we're going to be talking about Biani projects and I'll be sharing a lot of tips for using Biani products. And again, that's going to be at 10.30 a.m. Mountain Time, 12.30 Eastern Time on Friday, April 8th. So we have sent the store a really awesome trunk show that will showcase during Lunch and Learn, and then it will be in the display throughout the month of April. So be sure to join us then, and if you're in the New York, upstate New York area, stop in and see the trunk show, and tell them Annie sent you. So thank you again to everyone who joined us today. We are going to be back next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Mountain Time with another educational episode of Live with Annie when we'll talk about the first step in a Biani project, cutting. We'll cover tips for cutting fabrics, both plain and quilted, vinyl, mesh, fold over elastic, and more. So you're not going to want to miss it. And until then, happy stitching.